Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2, Episode 12, Thoughts. This episode is called Who You Really Are. Another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to, including this episode in this video. There will, in this video, be no spoilers for anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. The top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the second after strikers and I implore you to do so. And then there are some links to the videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So let's dive into the episode. So yeah, Sif comes, you know, walks up onto the the beach and yeah, someone asks, who are you? And she says, I do not know. Which honestly, there's a there's there's a decent chance that means she has actually watched the Thor movies. I honestly, I really I maintain her character was really short thrifted in those movies. Anyway, let's see. Yeah, I, I like the thing with you know I, I just forgot the. There we go. I just remember I forgot the light ring. Yeah, the the you know, Sky and May are training, which is not a group activity. Fits, and you know the. Yeah, you know May says don't hold back, and Sky says I don't want to hurt you, and May just gives her a look, and then she, you know, Sky corrects herself. I don't want to try to hurt you. <laughs> because it is like, yeah, um, that's not actually, you're not actually going to be able to, you know. And, yeah, you know, Fitz continues to be very concerned about Sky, which it's, it's a great little, you know, it's one of the first things that happened in the episode. And it tells us, you know, her, you know, the DNA, yeah. Her new DNA really is concerning to him. You know, he is he genuinely believes that he has to keep an eye on her so that it does you know, so so yeah. Cause, you know, we haven't seen, we haven't had her new DNA explained as, you know, how volatile it is, but you know, he knows. And he's showing this, you know, her and the audience. He is very, very concerned. And I quite like the cut from the fight scene to, to post-coital. That was... And both of them need some water, so it was a particularly vociferous session. And... Um, wait, what's... right, the, the, yeah, good scene between Coulson and Mac, and, you know, Coulson is like, you should be in the field, you know, the, the, and, yeah, you know, here we have this very big muscular black man saying, that's not me. I don't do violence. You know, and you get the sense that he's probably many times been expected to be violent. And he is, you know, he's he's that much, you know, it has, it has made him be overcautious. Because, you know, Coulson isn't telling him, go beat up a stranger. He's saying you know, you, we can use you, and, and Mac clearly does overall agree with the S.H.I.E.L.D. cause, or he wouldn't be a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. Nobody's forcing him. You know, it's not like Hydra, where they kidnap one of your loved ones and force you, you know, the, the you know, this is a universe that has ex-S.H.I.E.L.D. agents that, you know, are not, yeah. So, so the, yeah, quite, quite appreciate the show, Getting into that conflict, which, yeah, you know, there are a number of, you know, black men who resent people looking at them and thinking, oh, he's violent, he's dangerous. You know, and it, it isn't actually 
like if you look at the numbers black men are not more violent than white people that's really you know it started as a a, a bit of propaganda during slavery you know so that people wouldn't empathize with with the slaves and I gotta say, the moment that I saw that he was blue, da -ba -dee -da -ba -da, I thought he was a frost giant, but they do later say he's Kree, and I that does make significantly more sense for the storyline, I will say that. And we see Gemma getting somewhat more, like, aggressive, she, you know, I hope it's blood. I mean, that means we can get some information out of it, you know, but she's also like, we gotta make the icers more effective, and, you know, she she's like, and, and Fitz is like, oh, well, you know, it's, no, 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 it's not, I'm not saying you, I'm saying my side, you know, we have to make them more, you know, and, yeah, some people do react like that to these, like, you know, there have been some very overwhelming disempowering experiences you know for the for the whole team and yeah she that's that's her reaction to it and it is it is common and it is also I'm not saying it's all you know sometimes it is actually right sometimes when something bad happens it means you have to change how you approach that sort of thing in the future but, you know, right now it's certainly seeming like it's excessive for her. And, let's see. So, I really like Lady Sif in this entire episode, and, and just in general, you know. I really loved when... We, I don't even remember what it was in response to, but someone says something and she's like, Shut up! And the thing with, you know, she says, you know, I only know the things I was taught as a child. And, you know, she's like, oh, the, the, don't worry, it's, you know, nitrogen to, to breathe, you know, only, only seven creatures in the entire universe require nitrogen to breathe. And none of them are humanoid. What? I was taught this as a child. Were you not? <laughs> and the the let's see. Right. And and yeah, the the mission actually, you know, might have gone better if Sky was not losing control of her powers, you know, and. I really appreciate that they are making it clear that this is not something she wants to happen. You know, that was one thing that I thought... I swear I'm not going to get into an entire thing about it. Just, that was one of the many, many problems with the X-Men movie Dark Phoenix. It was not completely clear. Like, there, there are some scenes where it seems like she's upset and and it seems like she lost control of her powers, but then there's other times where she uses her powers, and then it seems like, wait, was she actually losing control, or is she just being kind of a idiot and, and jerk right now, you know? But here, it's completely clear Sky was not trying to use her powers, you know, and, like, that moment where she sees Bobby, you know, get... The, the, you know, it's not, like, a gigantic thing that knocks over on her. But, yeah, you know, Sky blames herself, even though she was, you know, she's not doing it on purpose. And she says, he was blue, like he just tested something for Willy Wonka. Let's see. And... At this point, Lady Sif is so used to having to over-explain things, so, you know, when, ah, oh, it's, it's like keys. You see, keys, they're this thing that you, you put into, in, into a lock, and you twist them, and it opens. Is, is there anything else that I can help you with? It's just, like, Colson's like, I, 
I, I understand keys. I'm 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 with you so far. I'll let you know. You know, just that was very funny. Love seeing so many women this episode. Imagine the misogynists must have absolutely lost it. And yeah, Mac tells Bobby to, you know, dismount and you know, yeah, turn down Lance. And what to turn down for. And let's see. Yeah, and Sky says, you know, I'd I'd prefer to sit this one out. And Colson's like, Are you okay? Is everything, you know? And May is like is this because, you know, she, yeah. And I, I quite like, you know, um, Vintech, as we come to know, you know, not long after the scene, you know, he's like, you will not fight me. And then they just cover him in a net. And just, yeah, that was pretty funny. And the, the, yeah, you know, we weren't told exactly what it was until that moment, but they did say, there's some awesome upgrade, you know, check it out. And let's see. Yeah, and it, it was pretty funny when, like, Sif is like, you will not talk. We ask the questions here. And, and Coulson's like, actually, it would be really good if he did talk because we need information. You know, it's it's one of those things like Lady Sif, Odin bless her, she really, really wants this to work out, you know, but she's working from too little information to always be as, as useful as she would love to be. And it's just it's it's quite funny. You know, it it would be it would feel really you know, obnoxious. If it wasn't for the fact that she's also, like, most of the time when we see Lady Sif, she's incredibly badass, you know. So, it's funny because this is, like, one of the only times that we've seen her really, like, struggle to understand what's going on around her and not really know how to proceed kind of thing. And, yeah. Bobby turns down Lance who is like are we are we that bad or is Lance and especially Greece like she's literally sitting there doing research and it's like okay in order to save the world I really have to get to the bottom of this this staff thing and he's like you can get to the bottom of my staff thing and it's like dude just time and place time and place that's all and let's see. Yeah, we learn, you know, Sif was sent to stop Vin Vintech and we're told about Terrigenesis. So it is, uh, yeah. And yeah, we, you know, we pretty much at this point know, yeah. So that's, you know, that's what they've been building towards, the, the Cree terrigenesis that, yeah. And, you know, you, you can really understand why this is so upsetting for Skye. And I, I really look forward to seeing more of her journey now that she has this information, because that's, you know, from day one, she's been trying to understand who she is you know, and to learn that she, you know, is supposed to be this weapon, you know, after learning that her mother is long dead and her father is a killer. So, yeah. And, you know, and, and it is, it's, it's clever because there are a lot of young women, you know, trying to define themselves, you know, it is this thing of, you know, well, dad kind of sucks. He's he's a bad person. You know, the the there are certain things that the world expects from her. 
you know, some powerful people look at her and don't see a person, but see someone that has to be controlled. You know, it, it's a... I, th I feel like they're doing a really good job with this metaphor. Uh, f f you know, I, I, I'm i sure that there were a lot of young women, as this show was on, who, you know, yeah, obviously it's a metaphor, it's not a one-to-one, -one, but, yeah, you know, they can recognize a lot of themselves, their own journey there. So, yeah, really, I'm a fan. And, yeah, they talk about, you know, okay, so this crate, you know, the, 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 the diviners are in there. And then they learn that it's empty, and I am kicking myself over already using... I feel like it's too soon to reuse the fifth element, the box is empty thing. But yeah, I am really, really excited to see, you know, we already know what at least two of the other ones. I think there were five in total. So, yeah, you know, th there are some that are unaccounted for. And yeah, I am very excited to see what, yeah. And, you know, this is also... This is when we, we, the audience, already saw a diviner with Gordon in an earlier episode, but now the agents are also, you know, also aware that there are diviners missing. And... Let's see. Yeah, and, and Fitz keeps Sky's DNA change a secret from Gemma. And it's almost like... <laughs> you feel bad because it's like you know she's like this is an amazing simulation you're you're really really talented I can't, uh, this is fantastic you know and see. yeah and you know I really appreciate I I I am very impressed with Chloe Bennett's acting uh, I really hope I've looked at a little bit. Uh, you know, she has done some other stuff than this. She is in some, like, recent stuff. Uh, let's see. Just, yeah, v um, among other things, like, voice roles and, and such. Um, you know, yeah, she has been in stuff since this, and not all of it is Marvel. You know, it's not only, though, she has played, yeah... She's played this character in various other things after this episode first aired. But but yeah, you know, the the um, she's appeared in other stuff. I I really hope she gets a uh, a long career. She's just incredibly talented. The you know, there are several bits during the conversation where they're talking about, you know, these are weapons, they are killers. You know, the, the, we have to be careful, we have to control them, and every so often it'll cut to her face, and she's processing the information and trying to hide from the other, you know, because she can't just blurt out, I'm a weapon, you know, then what is, you know, cause, so just, yeah, fantastic, she, she really nails that kind of, you know, I guess if you're, if you're auditioning for a spy show, you're, you're, it comes with the territory that you're going to have to, yeah, but, but she's really knocking out the park and props to the editing as well. Just really getting, yeah. Also, I just realized Roxanne Dawson directed this episode. I'm so glad she's still directing. Um, for those who might not know, she started directing on Voyager where she, of course, also played Belana Torres, and yeah, it's, it's, I'm so glad she's still uh, directing. She's incredibly talented, as evidenced by this episode, and she, you know, yeah. Um, let's see, the... Um, 
but but yeah, you know, really really great job. And you know, ultimately, Sky again can't quite control her powers, destroys the glass, and you know, Sif says, "It's not going to end at glass. You're going to end up tearing apart. You know, you're you're going to destroy the world with your powers. You know, just yeah, and and yeah, I mean." That is something that young women are told by people who hate them, you know, misogynists, uh, patriarchs and such. You know, if we let you, young, a young woman, do, you know, be yourself and do the things you want, it's going to destroy, you know, you're going to destroy the nuclear family. Society is going to be next, you know. So, yeah, really, really nicely done. And yeah, and the fact that one of the people telling her is a powerful woman, you know, sadly that, you know, it's not that like Sif is like always a girl boss, but right here she's kind of being that. And I really appreciate that like May and Coulson without hesitation immediately, like as soon as the, the two aliens threaten her, they you know, protect Sky. May gets out the gun and and trains it on the other. Just, yeah, really love to see that kind of, yeah. And, you know, yeah, May gets Sky to the cell, you know, locks both of them in there and says, okay, focus, you know, we can do this. And, yeah, I, it's it's great to see her care so much about, Sky, you know, early in the show, it was like, she's not Sky's, she's not the founder of the Sky fan club, is she? But she is really, like, you know, if she, if she didn't really care, she would just lock Sky in there, you know, but, but she specifically goes in there herself. And then we see the you know, Sif, like, stab her sword through, and it's very cool, like, yeah, I, I 100% believe that that would be powerful enough to, you know, so, so, yeah, just very, very nicely done, because we've seen, you know, like, we were told that Ward was, like, running and throwing himself at the wall, and not, you know, it didn't, it didn't, like, break a hole in the wall or anything. So, you know, clearly, th despite the fact that you can turn it off, turn it on and off at, you know, a moment's notice, it is actually, you know, it's, it's a substantial wall. And, let's see. See, that brings us right and and yeah the fact that Bobby was just slowing down Vintac was also quite clever you know she did say you know was it get Bambino or something and that's apparently you know that's the gun from the end of Avenger ne yeah near the end of Avengers 1 you know the one that Coulson uses on Loki and yeah, Sky actually shoots herself with the icer to make you know, yeah, to to and and yeah, she she really is willing to to she she does feel like she is dangerous to other people. It's it's really heartbreaking cuz she's such a she's even even in this season when she's been a bit more like reserved and such she's she's a chipper cheery character who will like take the dis the the metaphorical destruction of her world like she'll she'll learn something horrible about her you know her past or something and she'll she'll just roll with it you know but this really got to her and because of that to us and <laughs> Bobby uses Vintax, uh, you know, amnesia stick on himself, and, you know, just, all I'll say is he is much easier to work with for everybody else 
now that yeah and and yeah i i quite like the detail that like you know earlier we saw you know he's he like seemingly attacks sif and then afterwards says no, no, no i'm not i'm just, i'm sorry this converse, this argument was going nowhere you know so later when he attacks again you know the the fact that he feels that they have the same overall goal does not mean he is unwilling to attack and also just the fact that he really does not see himself as a villain very clever like at first yeah you did you know we saw video video can be very deceptive we saw him fighting Sif, and we're like, well, we know Sif's one of the good ones. It's not possible, you know, he must be a bad guy. And then, you know, later we learn, no, 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 she attacked him because, as an Asgardian, she has a distaste for the Kree. She doesn't trust Kree. <sighs> you know, they're, they're not all... Crap, what was it? What did Meryl Streep call it? No, not Glenn Close. What did she call it? Dick Dickhead, something like that. You know, but yeah, and that I I thought that was a, a quite good misdirect. Also, because a lot of the people they that the agents go after on this show so far have been bad guys. Let's see, and I like that as they're cleaning up all the broken glass, like Lance is there helping, sure, but he does have a beer in one hand. I feel like that sums up his character very nicely. And Fitz is basically the only one, like, speaking up for Sky in front of the others, and then we do the she's behind me, isn't she, thing, and yeah. Sky willingly goes into the the cell and closes the door, and she won't listen to to Fitz as, you know. Yeah, he he tries going after and trying to talk to her, and you can understand why. And then we get the post credit scene, which like holy crap! Like, I was already pretty happy with how much happened in this episode with that subplot. And I really appreciate just a little detail like the fact that, you know, when Mac and Bobby are talking about bringing Lance in on it or not, they talk about, you know, we saw how bad, you know, we know what it's like to learn someone we were working with was Hydra. And I think it's Bobby says, but we're not Hydra. So it's like, oh, okay, they're not Hydra. It's not that, you know, it's not that Bobby is a triple agent, but like... We still don't know exactly what. <clears throat> so, so yeah, very excited to find that out. And then, yeah, this post credit scene, you know, Lance says, I know there is no support group, which is, yeah, you know, there are ways for him to find that out. I know, I know about the thumb drive. I don't know what's on it, but I'm betting Coulson would like to know about it. And it's like, oh... He, he really must have felt confident that Mac would not try to attack him. Because it, it really, like, you know, like, Lance, you're about the size of Mac's, like, pinky nail. So there's no, like, it's not a, it's not a contest here, you know. But yeah, you know, Mac usually isn't violent. And the fact that he got violent with Lance, and he, you know, he didn't do it in a way that would, like, cause significant injury. He did it in a way that would eliminate the threat, you know. But, again, he really does not want for him and Bobby to be stopped from whatever it is they're doing. He was vi willing to use violence, use force, you know. So, yeah, that, I am really looking forward to the yeah and right also one thing that he that Lance really picked up on was Bobby told you get back up who is back up you know who is Dax and let's see so there's some IMDb trivia for this episode Eddie McClintock who plays Vintech had his voice alt digitally altered 
for this role. And I don't offhand remember. I have apparently seen, like, let's see, he appears on Just Shoot Me, Glory Days, The Sweetest Thing. Uh, I guess, is that all that I've seen? Yeah, those are things where I might have seen him, and I feel like I remember him from The Sweetest Thing. But, but yeah, um, very cool to see him here. And let's see. <laughs> A Crossfire Maximum Pinball Paintball arcade game is present in the Shield Base. This game was released by Team Play in 2005 and is considered hard to find by collectors. And yeah, during her training session, Sky, session, Sky asks Mei if she wants her to go full Mortal Kombat on her. Ming Na Wen actually played fighting game character Chun Li in the live action movie Street Fighter. The Street Fighter video game is similar to and came out around the same time as the original Mortal Kombat game, which 23 people thought was helpful and 26 thought was not helpful, which sounds to me like some people. I don't know, I guess prefer Mortal Kombat and is like, they're, they're not similar or something. I, I thought it was interesting, helpful, whatever. Right, and yeah, Jamie Alexander, who plays Lady Sephira, also plays Jane Doe in Blind Spot, a woman who also loses her memory. So yeah, that, and that was actually, let's see. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, this episode and. That show from 2015. Let's see. When did this? When did Blind Spot start? Uh, let's see. September. September 2015. September. September 21st, 2015. And this episode aired March 10th of 2015. I, you know, I can imagine she might have already had the the part by then, but. Maybe she got a taste for it here. And no, I have not watched Blind Spot, though. I, I mean, it's an interesting con concept. Uh, let's see, Blind Spot isn't on Disney Plus, is it? I swear this won't take long to check. I have it right here. Blind Spot is not on Disney Plus, so I'm probably not going to be watching it anytime soon. And. Yeah, someone pointed out Vintac is the same species as Ronan from Guardians of the Galaxy 1, a Kree. And yeah, someone else pointed out that the gun is named Bambino. And oh yeah, the scene in which Vintac is captured was filmed on the location used for the entrance to the Bat Cave. In Batman 1966, I thought that, I thought it looked familiar. Yeah, right. And yeah, when Sky says the man she fought turned blue, like he just tried some Willy Wonka gum. This is a reference to Roald Dahl's 1964 novel Charlie and the Chac Chocolate Factory. First film was Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, in which Violet Beauregard tries an experimental chewing gum, swells up into a sphere, and turns blueberry blue. Yeah, that's. I, yeah, clever, clever reference, and yeah, the, the, I like when, you know, the light pole falls over, Lance says, I barely touched it, I swear, and Max says, trust me, there is no universe on which I think you did that on your own, which I guess is an early multiverse hint, and the, you know, it's not, it's, it's, it's not a, I'm not saying when, but it's pretty, everyone by this point knows that it's, at least some MCU stuff is multiverse. Let's see. Right, and the thing with, yeah. Um, you know, they ask, you know, do you know the name of your short? What about Thor? And she says, um, I do not know this word, but when I, when you say it, I want to smile. Why? And Coulson, you know, is trying to be, like, <laughs> trying to be polite and says, who can explain the mysteries of the Asgardian brain? And May is like, I can. <laughs> Let's see. 
and yeah, and someone did indeed submit to the IMDb memorable quote section for this episode. The entire discussion, or a good chunk of the discussion between the the characters about the yeah, you know, Sky and yeah. You know, I a couple of things. Let's see. Um, yeah, the the thing with you know. Yeah, Fitz said I wouldn't let her. Simmons says you wouldn't let her. Mac says we could have handled her in a way that could have kept everybody safe. Bobby says, wasn't fair. We had a right to know. And... Let's see. Yeah, and, and Fitz, you know, says, you'd handle her. Mac just said, like Sky's something to be locked in a cage somewhere. We should be protecting her. And Mac says, we're the ones that need protection from her. So, that is also, there's a bit of an X-Men thing going on there, you know, and that is on purpose. That is very much intentional. You know, they couldn't, they didn't have, Disney did not have the rights to, the movie rights to the X-Men at this point. So, they didn't, you know, but they wanted their own. And... You know, you can understand that. The X-Men are a really compelling IP. Let's see. And, right, and also, I, I like the... Let's see. Yeah, in the opening... Ah, well, not opening. In the, in the first scene between May and Sky in this episode... You know, Sky says, I feel like I'm constantly on the verge of, I don't know. And, let's see. And, you know, she says, what's my option? I just might lose it right here. What I'm feeling is pretty dark. I'm afraid I'm going to go postal and tear your head off. You know, and May says, go for it. I promise you won't. You know, and that is the kind of thing that she needs to hear right now. And I do also think it is compelling. She does make that. She does agree to it. We don't see much more of the fight, but you know, it does seem like they did. They they yeah. She goes for it as May suggested, and it wasn't quite enough. You know, by the end of the episode, she's still losing control of her powers. So it really is like a a problem. You know, a lesser writer would have had her say, you know, had her walk away from the training, and then we wouldn't have, you know, then we'd be sitting back, ah, she only trained, but she did train, and it wasn't enough, you know, so that's a really excellent, yeah, and, <laughs> and the, the, yeah, the talk about logic and the, you know, when, when Sif says, Asgard is millennia beyond you in our pursuit of science and knowledge. And we have learned there are some things that can never be understood. And he responds, is this little talk one of them? Get, get, get to the point. What were you saying? What you're trying to say? <laughs> Let's see. And... Yeah, and also the point that, you know, Heimdall saw that a Kree landed on Earth, Odin charged Sif with retrieving this Kree. So, yeah, it is, you know, you can, you can understand, and, let's see, yeah, and, and, you know, the, the point that, yeah, Kree history you know, leads to, to concerns, and in actuality, like, we, we realized by the end of the episode, he was trying to do the right thing, he was trying to make things better, but 
I mean, it's essentially racial profiling is is what's happening there, you know. In addition to Girl Boss, they kind of turned Sif into a bit of a Karen this episode. But in her defense, it was Odin who, who sent her. Let's see. And, and yeah, also the, the thing with, you know, um, Mr. Cardozo says, You are a dangerous monster, and Sif is insulted. I am no monster. I am sometimes dangerous, but only towards those who are deserving. And soft little Coulson. I do not actually know. Is, is it only towards those who are? And he's like, No, that was right. Thanks. Answer his question, elderly man. Just, yeah, that was very, very funny, very charming. And also the, yeah, Sif asked, Yet you do not serve a king. Not really how it works with us. I wonder if I serve the king as the great warrior you say I am. Odin? Oh, we know you do. You've met him. Shut up! <laughs> Which, yeah, you know, if you tell... Because, you know, she only has memories from her childhood. As a child, she probably thought that Odin was the bee's knees. So, yeah. That is a, a quite clever little... I also couldn't help but note that, like, you know, they they they're like, oh, you're you're a warrior. Am I am I good? Oh, you're a good warrior. I'm a great warrior. I mean, you're not wrong, but that also wasn't exactly what they said. 